friends, and welcome to your June 2020 horoscope. And Gemini, this month is busy. There's a lot going on on the astrological weatherscape. There is just a ton. It is also a month where we have 60% of our planets, unlike last month when we just had 40. Now we've got 60% of the planets in retrograde. So the things that are happening this month is like, yay, let's change. Let's move some things forward. We've got eclipses. They will create disruptions and disruptions just mean changes. It's not good or bad. It just means changes. But then the benefits or the repercussions that come from those particular things may be delayed because we're in such high retrograde. Okay. So I just want to make you mindful of that as you listen through this and you see how this manifests for you. Consider the fact that some of the things may be happening quite, quite slowly over the next handful of months. Now, I also wanted to tell you, I got the indicator um, that during these eclipses in this particular month, I think that you are really susceptible to an energy zap. So if around the eclipses this particular month, Gemini, you can kind of lighten your schedule a little bit or just um, just lighten the schedule, I think, to give yourself a little bit of distance and ability to have some downtime. I just keep seeing you being really tired. So if this is something that you can avoid just around these couple days um, of the eclipse energies, which will be June 5th and then again on the 21st, um, I think that would be a really big benefit to you happening this month, okay? All right, let's jump in here and let's talk about what's going on because your ruling planet is going to kick us off for this month. So right here on the second of the month, we're going to see Mercury, your ruling planet, heading into shadow time and getting ready for this retrograde. So right here on the second, Gemini, you might be feeling things slow down. You might be feeling this communication, this money, this uh, these ideas about your finances slow down for some reason, or you're having to go back and have financial conversations conversations, right? These things could begin to start showing up on your radar. So if it does happen or you feel like there's a slowdown, that's usually the cause of it, okay? Now on the 5th, we're going to have our full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Sagittarius at 21 degrees. This is right across the street from you since Sag is your, your polarity, your opposite energy. So this is going to light up relationships for you, okay? Now, a full moon already says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So it, on its own, creates a shift, right? Our needs versus our wants. Our polarities are lit up. We're going in two different directions, so we have to compromise in order to um, resolve the opposition that happens at a full moon. But a full moon lunar eclipse creates an emotional or a situational reset that lasts us for six months instead of four weeks. In the energy of Sagittarius, this lights up your seventh house. This is conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships and relationships in your world at this time over the six months coming up will certainly be taking a shift. One of the things that you're trying to do with the Sagittarian energy is have a bigger picture of what is going on in your relationships. You're trying to have a more like pragmatic view uh, and perception of what's going on in your relationships. And I do think that even at a kind of spiritual mental level for you in relationships, it's going to be important for you to change your seating so that you can get a different perspective. What I mean by that is sometimes in relationships, you know, we're on the football field and we're, we've got great like field level seats and we're in the relationship here. So this means we are limited in what we can see. We are limited in decisions that we can make that would be best in relationships. So you kind of want to get a seat over this next six months in the nosebleed section where you can look down and see the entire field and it'll give you a different view, the big picture view, which is what Sagittarius is looking for in your relationships. So keep this in mind, right? And not to mention your seventh house relationship ruling planet, which being Sagittarius would be Jupiter. He's also retrograde. So truly you are going back over relationships. You are going back over relationships. And for some of you, it will be to just repair the relationship. And truly, even if there's been drama, there's been a fallout, there's been whatever in a relationship, if the relationship can be saved, it will be over the next six months, right? If the relationship has been trying to fall off, I think it won't even take six weeks, honestly, for it to begin to fall out. But in your going back over, what you're doing is looking for some healing and for some resolution and Gemini to make sure that your voice is as equally a part of the relationship as well, especially if this particular set of relationships you're working on has anything to do with your finances, you may be looking for a little bit of a detachment happening there, okay?
On the 18th, Mercury officially takes this retrograde in the energy of Cancer and will be here until July 12th. So this is in your second house energy. So this is over your finances. So what I know is that Mercury retrograde, we review, we revise, we re-edit, we reconnect, we think, we redo things. We go back to the past and go over something that's been happening. In the second house, this is about your money. How are you making money? What are you doing with your money? This is about your possessions. What do you have, right? Gemini, do you need to be packing a little bit lighter so that as we come out of retrograde season, you're able to pick up and move or you're able to be more efficient and effective with your energy because you don't have all this baggage holding you down is it a time for you where you're like yeah things have been going awesome here I am at my new place um I'd like to buy a certain whatever a certain possession to have in my space right cancer my home to make this place really really homey are you going back are you looking financially at where you will live or your connections to cancer energy family so again with that lunar eclipse that's happened at um your Sagittarian energies, your seventh house, I know that relationships and finances or relationship and the value of them is definitely on the agenda. Not to mention Venus is still in your sign, even though she's retrograde. So you're going back over. What is your value in relationships? How do you want to present yourself in relationships? And the nice part is that you're being relatively even-minded and diplomatic about it. So you've got some help this month in any of these changes that need to be happening, okay? On the 20th, we're going to see the sun enter into the energy of cancer, light, heat, life, vitality are on the table. You are motivated in this particular area. Oh, I am seeing too. Um, for some of you, maybe you had a project or a skill or a talent that you had or you were using and you were working on and you stopped using it for a while. And now this is the energy where you can bring it back in. And the sun is going to help that Mercury retrograde energy actually bring that thing back. So I wonder what you'll be going back to. Please keep me posted in the comment section down below. Now, the sun entering here also brings us in the uh, northern hemisphere to summer. Now, if you're a friend on the other side, you're going to be experiencing winter. Now, even though we're at this delay, delicious seasonal change, right? I actually think because we've got so much retrograde going on, this too will be a delayed reaction. We might not feel like, oh, it's really summer or, oh, it's a season change until we get to July. Our outer planets are going to be in retrograde. So it kind of makes the world feel like it's at a standstill. But nonetheless, friends, we are coming into summer in the north, okay? Now on the 20, 21st, to celebrate all that, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Cancer, and it is a new moon solar eclipse. And this is at zero degrees of Cancer. I cannot make this any more clear. This is important. At zero degrees, we are going to have important new beginnings that happen for us or important endings that happen for us. At zero degrees, it is critical there is absolutely a brand new beginning or a shift or an end happening to bring in a new beginning with this particular energy. Again, this is in your second house. So this is lighting up a financial idea for sure. This is also, I think, an idea because you've got so much going on in relationships at that other eclipse, the idea of your voice, Gemini, like really finding your voice out here, really finding your self-esteem through your own voice. It's a really powerful energy, I think. Now, if you do happen to have your birthday on the 21st or, you know, up until about the 23rd, give or take a couple days there, you definitely are in a cycle of an important shift. This will be a big deal for you. So make sure you pay attention and put it down below so I can at least tell you happy birthday, right? All right. As we get to the 23rd, we see Neptune taking a retrograde. Now we have got Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, and Neptune in retrograde. So the retrograde situation is absolutely real. And this is in your 10th house. Now, when Mer when Neptune goes retrograde, it's going to be in your 10th house, which is career. But it's also soul level calling. What are you known for? What are you doing? What are you giving to the world? Like if we said, oh, this is my friend Barbara. Uh, she does blah, blah, blah. What would follow that statement? What would we know you for in public, right? What are you producing? Because Neptune is this place that's very creative and walks and works in between the worlds for us. It's easy to create. It's easy to move towards that spiritual vibe. It's also kind of easy to get lost in the sauce, be a little delusional, not have all the facts. But as Neptune goes retrograde, it is like, boom, reality. It is heavy. You are faced with it. It's like, ah, oh my God, it's very, very grounding. So 
where this is a benefit to you is in your career house here, you will get to stand on your own two feet, look at your career, look at who you are in the world, look at what you're doing, look at your relationships and say, whoa, in the reality, is this what I want? Or boom, in the reality, let me develop the heck out of this thing. I'm doing exactly what I feel called to do, right? But while Neptune retrogrades in this area, she's going to ask you to go back and create the next ideal for this area of your life. My example is always before a chair was a useful material object that we have. It was just an idea. It was just an idea. So that's what you're going to do in this area of your life. Create this next ideal. What do you want here? What does it feel like when you interact with it? Very vision board level energy, right? So that in five months, you can start to put that in a material reality. So the next year of your career or what you're giving to the world will definitely see some development, but it begins in this retrograde time. So use it wisely, okay? On the 25th, Venus is going to come out of retrograde right here in your sign, so in your first house. Now, first of all, Venus retrograde has shown you some things about how you'd like to present yourself, maybe even how you'd like to style yourself, your branding. How do you want to be seen out in the world? What do you want to do with your external environment? That's very first house, right? But as Venus comes out of retrograde, now you are magnetic to other people, right? Venus is like, bing, she just lights up this beauty factor for you, and it makes you magnetic. It makes it so literally, when Venus is in your sign, it's like your skin is glowing, you're open, Venus in Gemini, your communication with people is like honest, it's diplomatic, There's, it's dripping with a magnet juiciness. So use that to your definite benefit. Any networking, any intellectual pursuits you would like to take on at this time are brilliant. And I think too, for some of our content creators or publishers or things like that, marketing and visual things are so beautiful at this time. So if you wanted to launch that website or make color changes or something like that, Venus will definitely help you be on top of that. On the 28th, Mars is going to enter into the energy of Aries. This lights up your 11th house space, so you are motivated to go get some friends, to interact with your friends, to be on social media, to do social things. The 11th house is friends, um, organizations, social media, social groupings, and your long-range plans, goals, and designs. And what I will tell you with Mercury in Aries, he is happy. He is comfortable. He's like, yes. So... Trust your instincts here. Trust your instincts and your intuition here, Gemini. You know if those people are the right soul tribe for you. You know about your message, right? You know it, whether or not you're saying it. Mars and Aries is ready for you to take some action. Put that post out on social media, right? Join that, that Zoom webinar that maybe you've been avoiding. Learn to use your technologies in a different way. Connect, right? Allow the connection to be there. And also, Mars and Aries does not think small. Right? So if you've got a long-range plans, goal, or design that you are trying to move towards, move towards it. Do it. Right? But remember, Aries likes short bursts of intense work and energy usage. So you don't have to sustain this for a long time. What can you use? A small blast of energy to get something done with in this area. Use Mars in that way, okay? As we close out this month on the 30th, we've got Jupiter and Pluto coming together again in a conjunction. And if you remember us talking about it or you haven't watched the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction video, please do because it gets so much more in depth. But as these two come together, this is like your Zoom energy to make your dreams come true, to get some things done. Now in April, these two came together and they were both direct. So you started something in your eighth house, the house of joint resources, vulnerability, healing, spiritual studies, counseling, um, financial dealings with other people. It's a very vulnerable, intimate energy. Whatever you begun there, whatever was starting for you or happening and swirling over there, Jupiter and Pluto came together. You were like, yeah, and you started to get some things done. So think back to April, even if it came in slowly for you. Think back to what was happening in the area where you are jointly connected and tied to other people because something was started there and it was likely something real good because these two like to bring some good things. They show you the wisdom in change. They show you the wisdom in why you would let go of doing something a certain way because it is just not going to serve you. Now, 
as these two come together again, they are both retrograde, which means you're going to go back over whatever you started there, right? But they show you that you have an immense capacity to defeat the challenges that are in front of you, right? If you're afraid, if you're afraid to not be financially connected to another resource, it's going to show you that you have got the capacity to stand on your own. If you're afraid to do that healing, if you're afraid to talk about that trauma, if you're whatever the fear is, whatever the hold back is, whatever the place you're feeling a little bit stuck, these two are going to say, you are way too gangster. Let me show you what you are working with so you can be efficient, effective, and successful in this area of your life. So please take advantage. And if you don't already keep an astro journal or something like that, to be able to really track back and look at in with honest eyes what you were working on, maybe think about doing it at this time because these two are going to come together again in November and I would love to see what you have created, okay? All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and being here with me. I hope you will join me for the continued Eat and Greet collaborations. I've got more friends coming over to the Cyber House where, again, we're going to bring you content on topics, but we're also going to bring you some techniques and teaching so that you can further your ideas and the usage of astrology in your own charts. I've got Maurice Fernandez on the way. Christopher Renstrom will be here. Oh, Gemini Brett, who we got to see was beautiful. Elizabeth Grace, I'm on the way to invite Annie Botticelli and Maria Di Simone. So the friends are lining up. Up. It's going to be a good year. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll keep you posted about all of the goodies. And thank you again for spending some time with me. Love you guys.